Hello and welcome to another Incubus tutorial. Today we are talking the banger that is the song New Skin. I'll talk about any pedals that I'm using as I go through the song, but the majority of this track is good old fashioned heavy Mesa distortion. Links to what gear I'm using are in the description of the video. So let's get cracking. <laughs> For the intro of this song, we start with a chunky B5 chord here. That is a standard B power chord at the second fret, but with the fifth in the bass on the second fret low E string. So instead of this, we get this sound. A lot heavier. So we palm mute for the first three times around, and then we release the palm mute for the fourth time, like this. The timing is a little bit odd on this first part. We start on beat one, then we switch to the and two of the next bar before repeating this pattern. If that's confusing, just listen to the track and just you'll get the timing down eventually and it, it starts to become second nature. So the very last time we play this round, we play that B chord, but we don't let the chord ring out. So we, then we wait for the bass to play that harmonic note before going into this. So this starts with our B5 chord again before going down to an F5 power chord on the first fret. Notice my strum pattern here is using a lot of upstrokes. For me the pattern doesn't work unless you do this. It's easy to get confused by the rhythm without doing so. So we have down, up, 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 down. The last upstroke is a kind of muted transition to the F5 and the final downstroke plays the F5 properly and lets it ring out. So every time there is an upstroke, you can see my fingers mute the strings very slightly with my fretting hand before the next upstroke. This stops the chord constantly ringing out and gives more definition to it rather than it being a mush of noise, basically. So slowly it's like this and watch the fingers on my fretting hand, so. Then instead of going Back to the F5, we play a D major seven by barring the top three strings at the second fret. And then we quickly play this dissonant chord on the second fret G string, third fret B string, and fourth fret high E string. This is a D root with a perfect fifth and a flat five, which really rubs against the D root. Sounds really dissonant. So that slowly through is like this. So you can see there's some slight percussive notes in there as well as you transition between those. So we play this around three times before missing out the D major seven and jumping straight to the D with the flat five. So that whole thing together sounds like this. And that sets us up for the verse. Now this is probably the hardest part of the whole song. If you need the tab for any of this track, I have it on my Patreon page and the link is in the description of this video. Really slowly through, the first part is like this. As you can see, we leave our first finger rooted on the 11th fret of the G string and play the other notes around this while constantly going back to this G flat note at the 11th fret. We finish this first part with a big C5 power chord, again with the fifth in the bass on the third fret low E. So I'll play it around a few times as slowly as I can so you can see what I'm playing with my fretting hand and my picking hand. I think this will be easier rather than trying to describe every individual note I'm playing. If you need to, slow down the video or grab the tab from my Patreon page. So it's like this. And the second part of the verse goes like this. So 
So that last run is something that I've kind of added really. I think Mike does play something similar to that, but I'm not 100% sure what. Once we finish up on the 14 high E, we're literally just running from the high E to the B to the G, one fret at a time basically. So starting on the 14, up to 15, 16, 17, and then finish on the 18 at the high E before going into the pre-chorus. Let's put all the verse together as slowly as I can. Again, it's one of those things that I think it's actually harder to play it slower than it is up to speed, but see how you get on with that. Then we're straight into the pre-chorus, which goes like this. <laughs> So on my cover for this song, I actually used the wah pedal at this point. It sounds like that on the recording, but I don't think Mike does this live. So it's up to you whether you use it or not. So we're playing the big B5 power chord at the second fret again before going up to an F sharp five. So just moving our ring and little finger up one string each. And we have just a couple of quick strums there before we slide up to this big C5 at the third fret. So that same shape as the B, but up, up one fret. So slowly and without any wire or anything like I just played, it's like this. And that last time round, I'm only playing that F sharp kind of once before heading up to the C5. Then from there, we're going straight into the chorus. So here we start on an A5 power chord at the 5th fret and we move up to an E5 again with the 5th in the bass at the 7th fret. Next we play a C sus2 with this big stretch which is your first finger on the low E at the 8th fret, second finger on the A string at the 10th fret, your little finger is on the 10th fret of the D string. Then we keep our first finger where it is at the 8th fret and we play an F5 again with the 5th in the bass. So from there to there. So slowly through that looks like this. Then we play the same thing again, but instead of that F5 at the 8th fret, we come up to the 10th fret and play a G5 power chord again with that 5th in the bass. So these two together slowly are like this. The first chorus is a short one before going back to the second part of the intro riff, so this part. And then we go into the verse riff again. Now there is a variation in the chorus, so when the chorus comes around for the second time and at the very end of the song, we play this variation. So these are the same chords. We've got an A5, an E5. I'm just making a, a sort of bigger E power chord there. A C sus2 and then an F5 or a G5, depending on which part of the chorus you're playing. Now the last time round of that chorus is back to the same chord shapes that you played at the beginning. So altogether, the variation of the chorus is like this. <laughs> After the second chorus, we go back into the first part of the intro, so this par muted part. Then we quickly stamp on some delay and add the PH2 super phaser and play this. Wow. 
And this is at the ninth fret on the B string, and then we play the eighth fret on the G string to the tenth fret of the high E. Then we play the seventh fret on the D string to the eighth fret on the G string. And then next is the seventh fret B string to the ninth fret B string with a slight bend up at the end. And then we finish with the seventh fret D string and a slide up to the ninth fret on the D string. So slowly through without the effects, it sounds like this. <laughs> Then we turn off the delay and the phaser and then play. So that is a variation of the pre-chorus riff. We play the B5 at the second fret with gaps in between before playing the F sharp five quickly and before playing back to that C5. The F sharp and the C5 together are palm muted. So slowly it's like this. Then we go back into the pre-chorus riff, but without the wah, and if you haven't been using the wah up to this point, it doesn't matter anyway. And then play through the last chorus again with that extra variation. Now the song ends on the second part of the intro riff, so this part. And the very last part are some palm muted chugs on the B5 power chord at the second fret before letting the C5 at the third fret ring out with another PH2 super phaser on top. So it's like this. And again, slowly through without the super phaser on top, that, that super phaser part just rings out to the song end basically. But without it, you've just got So don't worry if you don't have another super phaser, just let the chord ring out without the effect on, it's no big deal. And there we have it. Hopefully you now have all the tools to play Incubus New Skin. If you enjoyed this lesson, you may also enjoy the one that is on screen now. Thank you so much for watching.